In a previous video, I discussed how to determine the uncertainty uh, in a best fit line and how to come up with the best fit line uh, to a set of data. What I would like to do now is walk through an example to show you how we can do that. Okay, so the example that I have is some um, made up load cell data. The first thing that we want to do is we want to um, look at the output voltage as a function of input load in Excel and I want to plot the two of those uh, together using a scatter plot. Right? And by the way, the uh, default view or the default um, graph that Excel comes up with is hideous. So in a future video, what I'm going to do is show you how to make a much uh, more presentable uh, graph using Excel. Um, but anyway, what we have here is we see there's clearly a linear trend, a linear relationship between the output voltage, which is on the y-axis, and the input load that's applied to the load cell. Okay? All right. So, if we go back to our information here, the first thing um, that we need to do is we need to come up with our best fit line. And our best fit line, the easiest way to estimate the best fit line, is to use the slope and intercept functions. Okay? Or we can actually take our information uh, that's plotted on the data, we can right click and add a trend line. We're going to use a linear trend line and we're going to display the equation on the chart. Okay, so that is the best fit equation, um, the line of best fit that minimizes the residuals, the square residuals between this line and the individual data points. Okay, the other way that we can do it is we can actually uh, use the slope and intercept functions. All right, the slope function, we do equals slope, and um, you'll see that in our tips here, we need to uh, select the known y values and the known x values. So remember that the known y's are our output values, okay, and the known x values are going to be our input values, our input loads. Okay. So our slope, you see that the slope that was calculated using the formula agrees with the slope that was uh, calculated for the linear trend line. And the intercept function is intercept, and again we need to select our output values, Oops. and our input values. And we again see that we get an intercept that uh, is the same value as what is shown on the chart here. Okay, now that we've come up with the slope and intercept, the next thing that we would like to do is we need to calculate the standard error in this regression line. Okay, remember that the um, standard error is like the standard deviation for a bunch of data points if we have a single, um, a single input. Right? And the way that we calculate the standard error is using this STEYX, or the standard error in the regression line formula. Right, the standard error in the regression line formula, let's see, STEYX, and again we need to give it the output values as well as the input values. All right. So we see our standard error is 0 .04, and uh, this will have units of um, of volts to it. The units for the slope will be um, volts per pound force, and the intercept will be in volts. Okay. Now that we've calculated the standard error of the regression line, what we would like to do is um, we need to uh, come up with um, a way to uh, determine the uh, t-critical value that we're going to use if we need to estimate a confidence interval. Okay, So the uh, critical t-value we're going to need a couple of things to be able to come up with this critical t value. The first thing that we're going to need to know is um, the number of samples used to create or the, uh, the uh, regression line. 
and this is our n value, so this is the number of samples that were used. I'm going to use the count function in Excel to count all of the input load values that were used. Okay, so we have a total of 54. All right, so in our um, degrees of freedom calculation for our critical T value, we're going to need to take the number of samples that we used, and we're going to have to take two away from that. All right, so here we have 52 degrees of freedom. We also need to know what our alpha value is going to be, or our uh, desired confidence interval. So I'm going to go ahead and arbitrarily say we want a 90% confidence interval, which is uh, 0.9. All right, so our alpha value is going to be 1 minus that. Oops, equals 1 minus this value. And we can come up with our critical T value then by doing the, using the function T inverse. Okay, and it asks for the probability, so we want uh, our alpha value here, and our degrees of freedom will be 52, and this gives us our critical T value. Okay, so now that we have that, we can do a, uh, a bunch of different things. Um, the first thing that we want to do is let's pretend that we apply a load of... Um, Let's do something like 17.6 pounds force. All right, so if I apply a load of 17.6 pounds force, using my equation right here, I can predict what the output should be. Okay, so the predicted output should be our slope m times our applied load plus the intercept. So we should get a voltage of 0.657 volts out of the load cell if we apply 17.6 uh, pounds force to the input. Now the question uh, that we're really working towards here is what happens, what is the confidence limit or what is the 90% uh, confidence limit going to be on this output value? Okay, so um, in order to do that we're going to go back to the equation that's shown in here for predicting the output uh, based on our input. All right, so we have the t-critical value, we have our standard uncertainty value. Now we need to calculate what's under the radical here. Okay, so um, we need to know how many samples that we're going to use. So we'll go ahead and take our k to be 1. Right. Our n we've already calculated, that's the number of samples that were used to create the calibration line, which was 54. Okay, and then we need to calculate all of this stuff. What does this stuff mean? Alright, the denominator of this fraction right here can be calculated using the deviation, the square deviation in Excel to find the sum of the square deviations from all of the x values, all of the input loads. So I'm going to do that first. This is Dev squared. All right, and I'm going to take all of the x values, all of the input values, and calculate those. All right, so that is my squared deviation. All right, and the units on that would be uh, pounds for squared because we took all of our uh, deviations and squared them. All right, and my numerator here is going to be the difference between the input value that we want to predict the output for and the average of all of the uh, input values used to come up with the calibration line. So, so x bar, or the average of inputs, is the average of all of the loads that were applied. Right. <clears throat> so the average load that uh, was applied, since we went from 0 to um, 25 here, would be, uh, I guess I didn't, didn't do them all in equal steps here. Did we get all of them? It would be 12.7 uh, something. Yeah, because we, uh, I didn't have as many zeros. Okay. 
And um, let's see, I also need the average. No, I have the average of all the inputs. I, I need to get the value of the applied load, and then I need to take the difference between that. So this would be um, x minus x bar squared. Oh, x bar quantity squared. So um, to come up with that value, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the applied load. I'm going to subtract from that the average of all of the loads that were used to come up with the calibration line, and I'm going to square it. All right, and that becomes pounds force squared as well. Okay, so now I have everything that I need. I'm going to calculate the radical term first. So the radical term here is going to be 1 over k plus 1 over n plus the squared difference between the input and all of the inputs used to come up with the calibration line and this divided by that dev squared term. All right, so to do that, I do sqrt to calculate the square root. I will do 1 over k plus 1 over the number of samples plus the x minus x bar squared divided by the dev squared value. All right, so that's the radical term. All right, that would have units of pounds force. Okay, um, now my um, now I need to multiply my t critical value by my standard uncertainty. Okay, my uh, t critical value multiplied by my standard uncertainty multiplied by this radical value will give me my um, total uncertainty in predicting the output at a 90% confidence level. All right, so to do that, I would take the. Um, oh, where did it go? My. Um, My S, uh, my, um, let me start here first. Let me do my T critical value. I'm going to multiply that by the standard error. All right, and then I'm going to uh, multiply that by our radical term. All right, and that gives us the uncertainty in predicting the output based on the input. I'm sorry, this radical term should not have any uh, units associated with it because they all divide out. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, the product of the uncertainty, uh, uh, excuse me, the product of the t critical value, the uh, standard uncertainty, and that radical term, all of this right here, gives us our prediction confidence interval, um, which is going to be 0 0.0784 volts. So now, with all of that in hand, we can say that if we apply a load of 17.6 pounds to this transducer, we would expect to get an output of 0.657 volts with an uncertainty of 0 0.078 volts at a 90% confidence interval. Now, what if I want to do something else? What if I get a reading All right, if I get my measured voltage, and let's just say that measured voltage comes out to be 0.226 volts. All right, what I want to do is predict, um, use all of this information now to predict uh, what the load was that was applied, including the uncertainty. All right, so the load that would be applied is what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to rearrange the um, best fit line equation. So to calculate the uh, most likely um, load that was applied, I'm going to take my, um, let's see, the predicted load here, I'm going to take um, the voltage value, subtract the intercept, and divide by the slope. So I'm going to take 
that. Oops, got to do this all together. Take that, subtract the intercept, and divide by the slope. All right, and that would be in units of pounds force. So my predicted load is uh, five, a little over five and a half pounds force. Now, to come up with the uncertainty in that, what I'm going to do is take my standard uncertainty and divide it by the slope, and then again. Um, I'm going to multiply by this radical term. All right, and um, this radical term is going to use the uh, predicted output value right here. Okay, so um, what I'm going to have to do again is calculate. Uh, I've already calculated the square deviation here. I'm going to say we're going to use one sample. I have already calculated one over n. So the only thing I really need to change here is this value. Um, to come up with the standard uncertainty is what's in the numerator right here. All right, so to come up with that value, x minus x bar squared, I'm going to take this, the predicted load, I'm going to subtract from that the average of all of the input values that were used and square it. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to calculate the radical again, that radical term. All right, I'm going to calculate 1 over k plus 1 over n, and that term divided by the square deviation of all of the inputs. All right, so that's equal to the square root of 1 divided by k plus 1 divided by n plus x minus x bar quantity squared divided by the square deviation of all of the inputs. Again, this um, should be a unitless uh, value for the radical. And then to come up with the standard uncertainty in predicting the load, the input value based on the output value, um, I'm going to take my standard uncertainty value, oops, equals this. I'm going to divide by the slope, and then I'm going to multiply that by the radical term. All right, so this is the standard uncertainty in um, pounds force for predicting the load um, based on the voltage measurement. Now, again, this is standard uncertainty. It does not correspond to a confidence interval yet. It's about a 68% confidence interval. If I want to, um, in, if I want to use a 90% confidence interval on that, what I have to do is take the standard uncertainty value and multiply it by the critical T value. So the 90% confidence is going to be the um, standard uncertainty multiplied by the t critical value that we calculated here earlier. All right. So with a measured voltage output of 0.226 volts, we can say that the predicted load is about 5.56 pounds force plus or minus 2.2 uh, pounds force. Okay, so you can see by using this now we can, um, using our uh, calibration line and our calibration information, what we can do is we can actually quantify the uncertainty in our measurements depending upon how many measurements we've taken and what the scatter in the data is.